Test one, two, test one, two. All right, everything is working. Hi, everybody, welcome to VR Essentials. If you're new to the channel, very nice to meet you, and a huge welcome back to our viewers and also regular awesome subscribers because it's thanks to you that I keep wanting to do these kind of videos. By the way, do consider subscribing and also enabling your bell notification so YouTube tells you when we upload cool new videos in the future. And also, if you happen to have an HP Reverb G2, this is the go-to place for all your HP Reverb G2 content as well. But without further ado, today we're talking about VR and the automotive industry, including Pico, especially with these guys, because I'm very, very excited about the news that they have been announcing the last couple of weeks, to be honest with you. So let's dive in. Let me just uh, transition to the panel here. So they sent a tweet a few days ago, which was developers will now be able to take the VR creations beyond the computers and experience them in a combination with our Pico headsets and Holorize Elastic SDK created with Unity 3D. Now, first of all, just in case you're not aware, uh, Pico are basically one of the world's only company that also have a standalone VR headset, which means all the apps and everything runs from inside. You can walk, jump, run in virtual reality. And they focus primarily, primarily, sorry, even though they have an office in America on the China market, and they will also have for the consumers, that is. And for the Western market, they focus more on the enterprise market. So very excited because they'll have a lot of AAA titles and AA titles in there from the West that they're promoting to Asia. So if you are a developer, do contact us so we can put you in touch with Pico. So basically, what is Holoride? Well, Holoride is a technology that was developed by Audi a couple of years ago uh, where they launched the e-tron, which enables people who are passenger inside of a car or a vehicle to be able to have an immersive VR experience whilst the actual uh, the, the actual vehicle is moving. So this means that the, I'm just showing you the video now. You can see this girl, what's gonna happen. She's gonna put the VR headset on and her experience in VR is gonna be synced. Just listen to this. It's gonna be synced to the real world, all right? <laughs> Excuse me, we're live, unedited video. So it's completely synced to the real world. So whenever the driver is turning right, Inside the headset, the world itself is mapped to the to what's going uh, the, what's going on in VR is mapped to what's going on in the real world. So that's what's really innovative about this technology, and it's really amazing and very cool. I'm very excited that they're you know enabling Pico developers or developers who who who, who will create VR applications to use the Pico to be able to have experiences for people who will be in an Audi basically. So now of course. This uh, technology, as you know, the future will, as the future progresses, this technology will be available in other vehicles, of course. Now, VR at the moment is being used in a wide range of different ways in the automotive industry, of course. And just to you know, just to give you some rough numbers, basically um, there was a survey done by Science Soft in 2019, apparently. The automotive industry in VR uh, contributed towards, well, generated 759.3 million US dollars and is looking to grow by 45.1% in its annual growth annual growth rate um, by 2027. So that's only a few years from now. Now, 45% is quite a big number, and it is undoubtedly possible because, of course, there's going to be a lot more VR devices. That will be available now. VR isn't just for you know entertainment, of course, for the automotive industry. It's also used by teams to to build the cars. It saves so much money and so much time in R and D because you could put your VR headset on with teams spread out all over the world, especially during these day, these times, and people can actually see and touch the you know the the, the components at real human scale, um, and then experience the cars they build it. To eventually see what it feels to drive, and 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 there are other companies, for example, Lamborghini, who use uh, the Valve Index during the events and and the sales. If you go to a showroom for Lamborghini, for example, it is common in some showrooms that they have a VR headset there. And when you want to buy a Lamborghini or for even Ferrari, do it as well. 
Um, you could choose the color of your Ferrari or your Lamborghini, the interior and all these kind of different things. And by having your VR headset on, you can choose what you want before you splash your cash. And this is what companies are doing. This is why it's very exciting. And also, of course, they are virtual. Um, they are virtual showrooms online, uh, which enable people to be able to basically uh, go online and try the car out and basically, you know, just go into the car, have a drive. You can actually have a drive in a car virtually using virtual reality. I'm just trying to find the video. Uh, I think I may have closed the tab by mistake, but basically the fact is that they are, for example, Ford, Volvo, Volkswagen, they have showrooms. You can go online with a VR headset and you could try the car, you could drive the car virtually on a virtual reality track. It's pretty amazing, it's pretty cool. And now this is what's really awesome also is that VR is being used by Formula E as a means to test, to, 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 to train, sorry, all the various different drivers um, on their simulators, you know, and also uh, the Formula One drivers are also using VR to train on their simulators as well. So VR pretty much huge stance in the world of automotive industry. And also the other thing that I wanted to talk about very briefly in terms of Pico and what I was really, really excited about is the fact that they actually partnered with BMW iMotors. You gotta check this out, guys. Uh, let me just show you the press release very quickly. Here we go. Uh, Pico VR headsets, selective customers, sponsors, and partners of BMW iMotorsport will get access to the world's first fully Formula E immersive experience. Now, Barcelona, Spain, July 1 to 2021, Pico Interactive, one of the world's leading developers of innovative VR solutions for B2B use, will showcase for first time at the Mobile World Congre Converse, Congress, sorry, MWC in Barcelona, a groundbreaking virtual reality VR workshop and live experience developed by Munich-based sports consulting agency. We are Jerry, an AR VR expert, Goga for BMW iMotorsports Formula E engagement. The virtual experience works on Engage VR. By the way, guys, uh, if you don't know what Engage VR is, it's an absolute um, amazing platform where people can meet online in virtual reality. HTC, a huge amount of brands use this platform to have their annual meetings and personal meetings and education schools and all these kind of things. Sorry, I just side, side digress there. Let me just get back into the, into the article itself. Um, the virtual experience works on Engage VR platform developed by VR Education, which makes it possible to incorporate not only all CAD and 360 data, videos, live streams, and presentations from BMW iMotorsport, but also content from sponsors and partners. In order to overcome COVID restrictions on live events, such as VIP hospitality events, we are Jerry Kovar and Kovar created a virtual experience platform, the BMW i Virtual Garage Experience for BMW iMotorsport, which offers even more possibilities than the live on-site experiences. Guys, this is huge. I will put a link in the description below so you can actually go and read uh, you know, all about this. But I think what Pico are doing is really awesome. We are, by the way, we are an official channel ambassador to Pico and also an official channel ambassador to HP with the Reverb G2. And Pico have told us that they will be sending us the Neo 3 when it's ready to launch here in the Western market. So I'm very excited to try it as this is the Neo 2, of course, and it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about that. Guys, I hope you, I hope you enjoy, I hope you're as excited as me. And uh, I just want to give some shout outs to you guys who come to the channel and give some comments. So let's do that because it's all about you and giving back to you as well. So let's just go back to the uh, VR Essentials channel and I will go to the previous video. Okay, there we go. Videos. So the last video was all about the Steam Deck, which I'm very excited about and the possibility of this thing being really, really huge for VR. I mean, this could be massive if it really takes off in the second iteration of it. So Tubeless said, am I a joke to you? Okay, I think he, oh, he says UMPC. Am I a joke to you? <laughs> Very funny, I get it. Um, 
Eckhard Klatt, sorry if I don't pronounce your names correctly, guys. I do try my best. You're right, it's 65% a game console and 35% a Linux plus Windows wireless PC. Thanks for your work. Well, you're very welcome and thanks for your comments. That's why we're so hyped about this thing because it's a PC in your hands. You can plug in your VR headset in the future in the next potential iteration if it does well and I'm sure it's going to do very well. Uh, David Nives, Nevis, um, Nevis. For me, the biggest thing is this will cause a competition from the big companies that will cause the tiny PC tax, saying a thing of the past small form factor has always been more expensive since it is so niche. It is very possible it will kind of become a bit, you know, like a premium thing, but I'm sure the prices will go down, even though I'm pretty sure Valve are losing money, especially on the 399 one and probably barely making money on the next uh, version, but they're going to make it back on the software is basically their tactic. Um, maybe it's uh, Eckhart Cloud said maybe it's the beginning of cloud gaming. Yes, indeed. You s okay, you left two comments. Awesome. Thank you very much. A B says 1.6 teraflops is big for VR. You got to look at it from a long term, long term point of view, my friend. But thank you very much for your uh, comment. Ron M. Thanks. You're very welcome. Thank you for commenting. Vadim Zverev says how can I install 100 gigabit Red Dead Dungeon? Well, you're going to have to buy the uh, the bigger version, I, I understand, because they have different versions of the Steam Deck. So, yeah. All right, guys, let's give some uh, shout outs to those who just joined the community. We're nearly 8,000 subscribers, guys. So, we got to say hello to all the new subscribers. Come on, guys, we got to welcome them, right? So, let's go to recent subscribers, see all, and then go by dates. Here we go. I'd like to welcome Scott F. Um, I'd like to welcome Juan Sebastian Rodriguez, Jimmy T. Cricket, Action McLean, Harad Ryder, Polo Oliveira, Nick LP, Manny B, Johan Walsgris, Soren Christoph Kessler. Guys, welcome to the channel, welcome to VR Essentials and to the community. You guys are super awesome. Uh, thank you so much for, for, uh, for subscribing. And everyone else, consider subscribing as I mentioned because we upload some pretty cool videos all the time and enable your bell notification so YouTube tells you in your video feed when we upload the video. Video. All right, until next time, take it easy and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao. Bye.